and a one, and a two, and a one, two. They are telling me to stop singing. Uh, Legal is telling me to stop singing, which is fine because you're here for one thing and one thing only, After the Shadows. The show dedicated to talk everything about what we do in the shadows. So sit back and enjoy my rendition of my favorite song. Nope, just sit back and enjoy the show because here we go. You guys, I'm super excited for today's guest. He is the man behind the creatures. Please welcome the creative genius that is Mr. Paul Jones. Hi. <laughs> I have to give you that big intro because your work is so amazing on the show. Inquiring minds need to know, what was your favorite creature to work on throughout the series? It's tough because there's so many different uh, aspects to my job you know sometimes just making a pair of fangs for somebody is like a thrill and other times making a completely animatronic costume is like a complete thrill so I think the top three would have to be uh, anything I've done on Doug Jones because he he truly is an icon of the of the kind of the horror film industry and you haven't really made it unless you've glued a makeup on Doug. So that's the first one. The second one would be uh, doing, uh, creating fangs for Mark Hamill. Luke Skywalker needed fangs and, and they, they had, you know, just one day to make them because of a tight schedule. And I was like, I'm right there, I'll do it. So <laughs> it, it was amazing. And, uh, and then lastly would be the creature we have uh, created for season three, which is called The Sire. <laughs> What is it like to start creating a creature from beginning to end? Walk us through the whole process. It starts with a script. You know, sometimes a script can be very vague. It can just say a creature walks into a room and then you just have to gauge what the creature has to do. Uh, and then you base your design on that. Or you can have a description where a creature would be a certain shade of pink with so many eyes and so many teeth and so many legs. And then you kind of have to stick to that. So the great thing about what we do in the shadows is uh, the descriptions are not are specific, but not so specific. I can't have fun with them on this show. It's it's been a real collaboration. It's been wonderful. Tell us about the time frame to get someone prepped for a heavy makeup job. Like we were talking about the Baron. You must be in hours before we start shooting and hours after we wrap. What's the day like? Uh, yeah, the day can kind of start pretty early because the actors in before anybody else. Again, like the Baron makeup, we were able to get that makeup on in about an hour and a half, which is extremely fast for something of that type. But it's kind of pre-painted and everything. So really it's just gluing on the pieces. I also had to create an animatronic puppet, which was used for when uh, we were like over Doug's shoulder or it was a wide shot and he was being carried into frame where they didn't want to remove his legs or anything like that. So, you know, between those two elements, I think I think we pulled it off pretty well. It looks amazing. I mean, sometimes it would freak me out to have the animatronic Baron on in the little pink car because I would have to do a double take. Like, that's not that's not Doug. That's not that's not Doug, is it? No, because it looks so good and just like it's not until you hear the actual animatronics like mm -hmm. Kayvon does the voice like that. Ah. <laughs> There, there was a funny moment actually in the department store where Doug had spent the morning in the car and he's driving around having fun with it and then we swapped him out for the puppet and one of our producers, I won't mention his name because I don't want to embarrass him, actually went over and started a conversation oh, with yes. the puppet and wondered why Doug wasn't talking back and then realized it wasn't him and then just slowly backed away. <laughs> yeah. You know, it goes without saying, the work that you do is so believable that people are talking to these prosthetic animatronic creatures on set and thinking it's the real thing. You know, another character that we meet uh, in that episode is, which we mentioned, is the sire. So how long did it take to create the sire? Frankly, it has turned out to be a pretty terrific setup for all three of us. Bhutan Venom. Gyorum has comfort and space and companionship. The sire was great because because we actually had a fair amount of time. Paul Sims just said to me, we're looking for something sympathetic, but also scary. 
So I kind of created this kind of beaten dog kind of character, <laughs> obviously, you know, and started with a concept design. And then from that, we did some sculptures and the sculpts were molded. And then we did uh, foam skins. Then we did some animatronics. Then we did a fitting on Vios, who was our creature performer, who had actually never worn a creature suit before. That was his first ever time wearing a creature suit. And I think he did a fabulous job in the show. Oh yeah, he was fantastic and movement in it, it looked real. We also had this last final question that I have to ask you. We had thousands and thousands of submissions for this and specifically for this episode. And they wanted to know, and I have to ask it, what's it like working with me? With you? Well, <laughs> I've had worse experiences. <laughs> but I've had very few better experiences. <laughs> we don't really get to play together in the show as much as I would wish no, because no. I don't really use prosthetics in the show, not since my surgery, but the fact that <laughs> if we could, that'd be great. I think you've killed all my characters on the show. Yes. You've killed Carol. You've killed every vampire assassin. You've almost killed Doug. I mean, it's like, it's like every, I create it, then you get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, that's been our relationship for the whole show. I think we're going to hit like a pinnacle where it's fine. Like I don't kill them anymore and I'm going to join forces with you and something's going to happen with me that I need prostate. Yeah, that's exactly. Cool. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm sure you've heard of a New York minute, but we do a little game here called in a Staten Island minute where we put 60 seconds on the clock and we ask you questions, uh, multiple choice and see how many you get right. Are you up for the challenge? Okay. Yeah, let's go for All it. All right, let's get 60 seconds on the clock, please. All right, here we go. Unlike most vampires, the Baron had a more monstrous appearance. He lacked blank. A, genitals, or B, feet? A, genitals. Correct. In the mid-1920s, which actor pioneered special effects makeup by creating his own looks for The Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, Phantom of the Opera, and many other films? A, Lon Chaney, or B, Douglas Fairbanks? Launching. Correct. The past couple of seasons, you've helped bring werewolves to life. Do you think I'm Team Edwards or Team Jacob? A, Team Edward or B, Team Jacob? A, That's Edward. right. You're right. Who is responsible for Carol's death in season two? A, Nandor or B, Guillermo? You. That's correct. B. The first film to use latex extensively was A, The Wizard of Oz or B, The Mad Magician? The Wizard of Correct! Oz. Which of the following name is not someone from Simon the Devious's crew? A, Ken the zombie of his former assistant, or B, Elvis? Ken the zombie of That's his former correct. assistant. That's correct! You worked on the horror film Silent Hill, doing special effects makeup. In what year was it released? A, 2008, or B, 2006? Ooh, I would say 2006. Correct! And that is time! You got them all correct! I think that is a first. <laughs> Took it easy on me. Thanks, man. I want to thank you so much again for coming on and talking with us. Next time, maybe we'll just skip the whole interview thing and you just put prosthetics on me and make me a vampire because it doesn't look like Nandor's doing that. He's a jerk. Done. No, no, he's really, <laughs> he's really dropped the ball. Well, thank you again, Paul Jones. Everyone say goodbye to Mr. Paul Jones. Bye, guys. As per usual, I also want to thank you for letting us into your home every week, week after week. And until next time, stay put. Don't change the channel, because <laughs> we're watching you. We're watching you. So I'd like you to stay put. Until next week. Not me, though. I have to go. Ciao!